Thank <laughs> you. 
Unifree School District Board of Education uh, meeting to order and uh, stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and, and to the Republic, Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Just again for the purposes of the recording and, and, and those who might be listening. As a result of the COVID-19 pandemic and in accordance with the governor's executive order 202.1, members of the public are not permitted to attend tonight's board meeting in person. Uh, the Board of Education is attending the meeting remotely via Google Meet. The meeting can be viewed via live stream today at www.easteraurorschools.org, B-O-E-M-T-G live or via the link on our main district webpage. Uh, in addition, the meeting is being recorded um, and transcribed at a later date. We did ask oh. in advance uh, for anybody that wanted a comment or a statement to be read during the course of visitors' comments that they email those comments to boe at eak12.org prior to 6.45 this evening. I am in receipt of one letter that somebody had sent in, um, and I'll read that during visitors' comments. Uh, may I have a just, yeah. John is here, just so you know. John has a How are you, you doing, Hey, John. Hey, Brian. How are you? I like the bow tie. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, may I have a, manner, a motion to enter executive session to discuss matters related to the employment history of five particular employees, matters related to three particular corporations, the collective bargaining negotiations with the East Aurora Faculty Association, and the collective bargaining negotiations with the East Aurora Civil Service Personnel Association. So moved. Uh, moved by Jessica, seconded by Terry. Discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right, so at this point, just either make sure you hang up with that red phone or that you X out of this room and go to the other link found in your uh, email. Thank you, Mr. Member. Thanks, Mark. No problem. Yeah. All right, everyone's gone.
Good evening, everybody. We are, this is the East Aurora Union Preschool District Board of Education meeting. I just want to reiterate, uh, as I did when we met uh, for in public session initially at 6 p.m., that our meeting is being uh, held uh, as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic in accordance with Executive Order 202.1. Members of the public are not permitted to attend the board meeting in person. Members of the Board of Education are attending remotely via Google Meet. Uh, the meeting can be viewed via our live stream, and I do understand that we have some audience members in attendance this evening, so welcome. Uh, and uh, we did ask for any comments that people want to read uh, during visitors' comments to be emailed to our BOE at eak12.org prior to 645. I did receive one comment, which we will read later on in the meeting. We are returning from executive session where the board uh, discussed matters related to the employment history of five particular employees, matters related to three particular corporations, the collective bargaining negotiations with the East Aurora Faculty Association, and the collective bargaining uh, negotiations with the East Aurora Civil Service Personnel Association. We have one agenda change this evening. It is a new addition to the agenda, item K to approve the change order for the capital outlay project for the middle school reconstruction uh, under items requiring board action. Mr. Russ, were there any other, other agenda changes? Uh, no, that's it. All right, we are on superintendent's comments. Uh, yes, you know what? Um, I just want to uh, start off by, by thanking um, all of our administrators and, and teachers and the board of ed. Um, uh, for the great work that's going on and the great support that we've been given. Um, our families and the community, our PTOs, have just done a fantastic job at uh, helping us to get through the, 
well, now three and a half weeks of um, at-home instruction. Uh, and so it certainly has been a challenge, um, but I really, uh, it has gone as well as can be expected. Uh, we continue to um, provide uh, review and new instruction to our students K through 12. Uh, we're in the process as we approach uh, the, the break. Uh, we're going to continue with instruction in food service delivery and child care uh, for Good Friday and through spring break. Um, you know, maybe it'll be slightly modified uh, during this time, uh, but nonetheless, it will continue. Uh, and we're also going to be doing some preparation with our, our grade level and our team leaders, K through 12, on Monday uh, for the next round uh, of instruction as we move into an extended break. Uh, as we all know, school has been closed through April 29th, and those decisions are, are now made by the governor, um, and, and he will make a determination uh, if that uh, closure will continue. Um, we don't know exactly when, but hopefully sooner than later. Uh, and then um, from that point, uh, we are now going to be looking at instruction and what it looks like and how we're engaging with our students and the progress that they're making and, and looking at some determinations for the fourth quarter and looking at the essential elements of the different instructional areas and what do we need to accomplish between now and the end of the school year, whether we stay in home instruction or we, we transition back to school. Uh, so they've done a really a brilliant job. There's so many great things happening um, and a lot of uh, thank yous and support from our community um, and, and a lot of encouragement from our teachers and our administrators in regard to um, helping parents to get through this because uh, it's not easy. Um, I say right now, fortunately, my, my kids are all grown and out of school. <laughs> and I know that some of our younger administrators are, are dealing with their children at home and, and, and continuing their education. And so they understand and they're educators how challenging it can be to do this from home and, and managing all the, the materials you're receiving and the online instruction. So it, it certainly is a, a challenge for everyone. But I have to say we're really doing it uh, very, very well, I would say, among the best for sure. Uh, again, too, um, for students with, uh, uh, with, with special, special needs, again, our, our staff is, is really kicking the high gear and making sure they're in contact with those students and their families, uh, again, to make sure that those proper supports are in place. Uh, we'll be evaluating that at, at a point uh, in the future in regard to uh, the need for additional support, uh, you know, over the summer or into the fall. Uh, but again, those determinations will be made uh, by the teachers uh, with Mr. Polakowicz and also through the CSE. Um, meal delivery, it's, it's, it's really going very, very well. We've had a lot of people opt in, which was a, a, a nice surprise for us and, and many parents. And I was with some of my the PTO presidents today, and they were saying how, how nice it is to have the food delivered because they themselves are tied up with having to report to work, even if they're doing it remotely. And so they have younger children and, and their meals have been a, a major relief for them in regard to knowing that breakfast and lunch will be provided. So, so many people have been uh, taking advantage of that and really have found it to be uh, very advantageous. Um, again, uh, on the child care side, we've done a lot of advertising to, to try to, to inform our parents, not only our parents, but members of the community who are essential workers, uh, you know, there's, and there's a long list that was provided to us by the governor. Uh, so we've, we've reached out, we've sent out blasts, we've advertised it in the advertiser and the B, um, but we haven't really had a lot of inquiries. And I believe it's primarily because, um, a number of people have pulled their children out of daycare because they are now home. And so those daycare positions have opened up. So as people have been needing them who, who had their children in school and now they have to have daycare, have been able to find those things on their own. So we haven't had a lot of inquiries, but we've also established a relationship with Erie County, who is it was it was very um happy to support us and our, our community members in regard to finding the appropriate service for their children. Um, so that's gone really well. Uh, just a lot of fun things. I think, you know, teachers are reaching out to their kids. Uh, uh, most recently, Mr. Brown and Mr. Librock just put together a really a, another ridiculously funny video. <laughs> I appreciate that as to our, our students and their families. Um, great video from the high school, great video from Parkdale. So those types of things that we want to stay in contact with our kids and their families uh, just to kind of keep it a little lighthearted and also working with the PTO to uh, to reach out to our families. PTO has donated um, to our workers uh, who are delivering our meals. They've been bringing in coffee and donuts each morning, which has been really generous of them. 
And they're also going to, we're just preparing for a, a contest for our students to possibly win a gift card uh, at each of the buildings in each week. And we'll be sending out the details for that uh, very shortly, uh, probably sometime next week. Uh, and they had some other great ideas, again, to continue to support the community uh, during these difficult times. So, yeah, in general, it's it's just been really great. I thank the board uh, for all of your support and and getting behind us and and uh, dealing with the uncertainty, because a lot of times we don't know things. And you've been very patient and supportive and giving us the resources that we need to be able to get the job done. So, yeah, I'm really grateful to the board for that as well. So let me just um stop you there and, and sort of thank you on behalf of the Board of Education because the, these last three and a half weeks I know have been a tremendous amount of, of, of stress and teamwork and, and real collaboration between your, you and your administrative team, our, our teachers, our staff, and, and, and community members from PTOs down to parents and, and everyone. It is Nothing short of impressive, I think, as so I said last time, to see the amount of effort that's gone in to get the instructional piece up and running and for, for students to be engaged um, and working and for teachers to be responsive to those kids um, in, a, in, a, in a timely way and, and providing that support that they need to have that food service get up and running and, and, and being so successful really has just, I think, been a tremendous help from, from what I'm hearing to, for a lot of families. And to see the child care piece, I did see the the advertisements uh, in the in the advertiser in the B, and I know you've done some blasts out that I I myself have, have received in that regard. Um, it's been impressive to see the the videos from Parkdale. I, I you know the 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 morning announcements and the April Fool's Day, uh, Mr. Librock did, and and the videos that they did for the middle school between him and Mr. Brown and the high school. I, I'm impressed by uh, you know as a parent of a high school student the the. Um, constant communication that's coming out of the school for folks to be aware of what the changes are and, and aware of whatever information there is about, um, you know, events getting postponed or delayed or rescheduled. Um, and we're taking it, you know, I, I appreciate that the community is taking it, you know, day by day and week by week, because as we get that information, you and your your team are disseminating that information. We're, we're getting regular contact and regular information, whether it be food service or instructional and, and the child care piece. And so I, uh, just on behalf of the board, want to thank everybody that's involved in it. And that and that's uh, the entire community. I think the hashtag was 1EA. And I think that that's been... Um, been great to see and 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 thank you uh, on behalf of the community and the board for all your efforts. Thank you. Did you have more in superintendent's comments, Brian? Um, no, I don't think at this time. Okay, um, we're moving on to board presidents and board member comments and committee reports. Other than the big thanks, I, I um, we did have a budget finance committee meeting uh, earlier this week, and we'll get into that as we get into the budget discussion. So I won't up to, won't take up the time now, but I will go around the table. Jessica, did you have any comments this evening? I'd just like to second your big thanks, Ms. Olweiler. No, other than saying thank you, nothing. John Segetti. No comment. Thanks. Okay. Judy Malice. Thank you so much, Kim Daniel. Thank you. All set. And, Mr. and Mr. Brunson. Well, I, I'm just so proud to be part of uh, such a wonderful group of people. I mean, all of you, uh, the administrators that are uh, here at the meeting tonight, uh, the the board members, and uh, and I'm uh, just I, I'm speechless when it comes to the effort that our staff has made to to uh, connect with the children in a different way. And uh, I'm, just, I'm just so proud of all of them. Uh, Brian, there, wa there was um, an article in the paper about other schools in other states and some families kind of dropping out of sight during this time where they were not able to reach them by phone or they were not able to communicate with them uh, online and uh, and that there were some uh, kind of lost people out there. Do, do we have any folks like that that we know of? Um, and Dan, you know, and I, I can let the principal speak to this, but from what I understand, there, there have been a few families that we've had 
some difficulties connecting with. Uh, it's a it's a very small number, uh, but they continue to use like uh, they they do um, phone and email connections from the teacher then to the counselors, then to the, the principal. So they have all the whole teams kind of working on those efforts. I don't know if anybody wants to comment. I know there were a few families that we were still trying to work on. I don't know if anybody is completely disengaged, Dan, but there is some level of, 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 of engagement we'd like to see improve. Uh, the principals, anything or anyone? Well, why don't we just, <laughs> Jessica, anything? Um, I think we might have a small handful, but um, we've reached out by... Um, email, by phone, we've had Google Meet meetings, so we're trying everything possible. I don't really have an exact number, but I would say about 97% of the kids have joined the classroom, Google Classrooms. Um, their level of work has varied, but at least 97% are on and receiving the messages uh, and the work and everything. Well, that, that's very helpful to know that number. Uh, the, mm -hmm. the I worry about a child, for instance, who might be in a rural area and who doesn't have access to uh, internet uh, and whose parents may not be able to afford to do whatever they have to do. To, so I'm, I'm really pleased to hear that we're continuing to try to make connections with the 3% that, um, that are still out there. Dan, I, thought I, I thought with respect to the Internet folks that we had sort of come to a solution for those that didn't have access. Brian, is that Right. Yes, it is. Yeah, we, we Dan, we did a survey uh, at K through 12 to ask uh, what type of if they have connection and do they have a device, and 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 we had a few people that were were um, that needed some support, and those things have been worked out. And some people who said that they did have a device then have asked us for the device from school because they've realized that the one device isn't enough. So we've distributed. Um, Pretty much everything, five through twelve, all the Chromebooks have been distributed to our students and, and principals. Correct me if I'm wrong there again. And then, and then, and then Jessica is just working on what do we do with our youngest students in grades uh, K and one, and 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 how do we distribute the rest of the Chromebooks to make sure that they have the proper supports in place? Because up until this point, they really haven't uh, necessarily needed it, especially for the students at the earliest ages. But now we're noticing that some parents are reaching out for us, and we just discussed that today and how do we possibly distribute those resources to those students mr like brown did, did, I, did, I was sorry Brian, you no were, no go ahead go ahead okay i was just going around the the, the building sure. so we would make yeah, we, mr. Um, brown. sorry yeah so we we have our number at um it's in single digits right now of students who we've not heard from i know that there's two in fifth grade um and i believe we're at six or seven at this point um, we've been meeting constantly, the teacher teams, myself, you know, with them, our counselors. And what we decided was we kind of have stages where if the teachers aren't hear from, hearing from them on a weekly basis, um, they come up in the team meetings. One of the teachers then reaches out um, to that family for email and or phone. Um, if there's no contact made, they notify the counseling center and, my, and as well as myself. And then one of us is making those phone calls. Um, so we're actually, um, we met earlier today and established who was going to make those phone calls for the students that we still have not heard from. Um, but the list is very small, um, which is encouraging. At the same time, we're still concerned about the, that view. Yeah. Them. Do we and have any, uh, are, are we seeing that like meal deliveries are, are not getting picked up for like, it's, um, yeah, I can or, speak. To it. It's a it's a very small number of meals that are not being picked up. Sometimes there'll be just one leftover from the week before, but but it's very large, uh, very well received. We get reported back anything that's left on a Friday that's still there Tuesday, um, and we're tracking folks down that way. For example, we had one family, uh, the mother or the the sole provider is is a nurse. And so she sent her daughter to go live with someone else. Um, and it just took us a little while. And the mom was working 12 or 15 hour shifts. So it just took a couple days. But but that came to light because the meal was left over. When a meal is left over, um, we reach out. But I think in, in the three weeks we've done it, it's, again, single digit number of meals that have uh, um, been left. And those get reported back to us. And then I turn that to the principals and we reach out that way. So we do have a system. Um, Again, the encouraging part, it's single digits. The scary part is we still got to find those single digit kids. Ms. Uh, Daniel, you had a comment. Uh, well, I was just going to ask for some clarification. So when we say six or seven children at the at the middle school, does that mean we have had no contact with them? 
in these three not, weeks? Not, not necessarily. Okay. Um, it's every situation is very different. For example, we've had contact with with a parent who the student is not residing with. Um, you know what I mean? Um, but okay. what we haven't had is engagement within the classroom, within Google Classroom, within turning in schoolwork. Okay. Uh, many of them we've we've connected with at some level, um, but we're still waiting, you know, for the educational aspect of it um, to, to all come together. Okay. Well, I'm glad to hear that you're tracking all that. That's, yeah. that's commendable, and I, I appreciate uh, the effort you're making. How about the high school? Hi, Dan. Oh, hi, Bill. <laughs> We, uh, we're following a, a very similar process as I would say the middle school. Uh, the teachers have been very, very uh, good at uh, monitoring student progress. Um, when they're uh, seeing a lack of engagement, they're reaching out to the student first. If there's a lack of student response, they're reaching out to the parent. Uh, if there's lack of response or continued lack of engagement, then the counselors are getting involved. Uh, and I appreciate the communication I'm getting from the teachers and from the counselors. Um, I've yet to have to get involved. Uh, but I think as this continues on, it's going to be less of an issue, um, Kim, communicating with the parents and with the student, but it's maintaining that level of engagement that we're expecting. Uh, we're monitoring it down to what assignments they're missing. We have a, a spreadsheet that we're using. Uh, the teachers are submitting that uh, to me and to the counselors. And then our high school secretary, Mrs. Sedfeld, is uh, uh, putting all of that together at one on one spreadsheet so we can monitor not only the communication, but also the progress of the students. So it's, it's, um, it's a, a, an enormous task um, and one that, that um, is only going to uh, continue throughout the entire school closure. Um, many of the teachers are, are saying that, you know, some of the students that are not engaged now were ones that they were struggling to engage when they were um, present in, in the school setting in front of them. So it's continuing at home as well. Um, so it's not necessarily the communication that's the issue. It's it's maintaining that level of engagement. Do you have a sense that that there's some that are not engaged at all or, or, or you're, you're, you're getting um, like, you know, we had 97% and only six right. or seven kids at the middle school. Do you have a sense of the number, how to quantify it at the high school? Uh, I don't right now. I can tell you that all of those that would fit into that category, our, our counselor has communicated with them within the last week. Um, so we're hoping to see uh, a change in the level of, of, of engagement and, and production of work. So um, I'm meeting with the counselors tomorrow morning, and it's something that I can ask them at that time if they, if they have that list uh, and I could share it. Thanks, Bill. Thank, thank you, Bill. Thank, thanks to all of you for the effort you're making on behalf of, uh, of, uh, of all the children. Thank you. All right. Um, I think that I covered every board members, right? I didn't miss anybody. Uh, then we are moving on to administrators' comments. Um, I'm going to uh, go around the room. Jessica, did you have more to report on? Um, no, I really don't. I just want to thank all the teachers and the parents. They've been amazing. Um, you're working from home, but I'm, I'm definitely busier now between all the meetings and the teacher phone calls and the emails and uh, the parents reaching out to me. I'm glad it's all happening. And I, I really appreciate all the hard work and effort and the questions that they're asking and um, to the teachers for all of the technology they've taken on and have taught themselves or have taken classes the last couple of weeks to keep up with the changing times. Um, it's really quite amazing, uh, and I'm very appreciative of it. So I just wanted to thank them and the families. I've been stalking your Parkdale Facebook page. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, do Do you have it? Have you gotten like more um, friends on that page? Is that is that they've been doing online yes. learning? So oh, are, yeah. you feel like you're you're reaching a lot of folks that way? I I love to see the pictures of the kids doing stuff at home. It, they yeah, more some people. Great um, experiments. Yep. Yeah. More people have not only liked the page, but just more communication and more back and forth. And the pictures I put up, I think it helps people feel more 
connected to school, just seeing the pictures of the kids um, in their park deal gear or their, um, like you said, doing science experiments and going on scavenger hunts outside. And I really want to thank you and your staff, mm -hmm. the, the video of all the teachers um, with their miss you placards and, yep. and showing yep. their families and, and social distancing at home. It was, it was sweet. Very sweet. Yeah, we're planning on um, a bunch of schools in the area have done those parades. So we're working on one of those for, I think, the week of April 20th. Um, we're going to do it next week, but the weather doesn't look so great next week. So we're going to wait till the week of the 20th. So we're planning a route that goes all around um, East Aurora School District. Wonderful. Stay Mr. Tuned. Brown? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Brown? Yeah, so similar as you know what Miss Lyons just said. Um, just I'm so impressed with our team um, here and and the leadership here. Um, our meetings have been long, but they've been very important, and we've accomplished a lot. Um, and the teachers are just they're they're completely out of their comfort zone right now. And I've had a lot of conversations. We didn't go into education to sit at a computer um, and do it this way. This isn't why any of us are here. Um, but ultimately, they've just stepped up their game and tried new things, and the flexibility is incredible, um, and the students are asking great questions. The parents are engaged. It's just um, we've really come together, um, and it's, it's been impressive to see that. And also, I just have to thank you know, Matt Leibrock, um, you know, starting his tenure as the assistant principal under these circumstances is not easy, and I've really appreciated his support. Um, even those goofy videos that we're doing, we're trying to have a little bit of fun and we're trying to encourage the students to still have fun, you know, because it's, it's very important that we still do that. And Dennis Hirschfeld, you know, all of his help, um, you know, with the technology, even for us in our videos, we didn't know how to do those things. Um, so it's just nice to, to have everyone come together. So, and, right. and obviously we appreciate your support as well. Thank you. And I, I think it's important for people to have some levity in their day too, and, and to be able to, to see their teachers, um, doing something to, to make somebody bring a smile to a kid's face or to help a parent laugh, I think is really important. Right. So thank you all. Thank you all for those efforts. Mr. Roberts. I think I'll, I'll start by echoing the, uh, the thanks um, that, that uh, my colleagues have um, expressed and also the, the Board of Education. Um, it's definitely been a, a, a team approach and, um, and we had a strong team going in and, and it's proven to be, you know, beneficial through this process. You know, I, I'm um, many times conflicted because uh, although we're dealing with this crisis and doing things so differently, the high school keeps rolling on with all the things that we're expected uh, to do this time of year. So um, just want to let you know that we're, we're not missing a beat, um, focusing on our, our seniors, applying for uh, local, regional, and national scholarships. Uh, we'll be done with our course request uh, by the end of April for uh, the 2021 school year. Uh, we are still coordinating alternative dates for our prom. Uh, we're juggling the um, recent changes to the AP exam format and now the cancellation of Regents exams. But, but at the foundation of all that, focusing on and continuing to work on um, our focus on student wellness and reaching out to students who are uh, most in need and most vulnerable uh, during this crisis. So proud of the team effort and the communication that we've had within the high school doing our best to communicate all these things uh, efficiently um, to the, the school community. And, um, and that's going to be a regular thing moving forward. So um, again, thanks to, to the board and their support and, and my colleagues as well. Thank you, Mr. Roberts. And, and thank you for all the, the efforts. I, I really am impressed by how well you're keeping uh, parents and, and students informed and updated. It, it's, it's really appreciated. Thank you. Mr. And, Corella, um, did you have, oh. No, that's perfect. I was gonna hand it over to Mr. Corella, so thank you. <laughs> well, thank you both. Uh, 
so I have some good news to report out. Um, I'd like to congratulate our music program up at the high school. Uh, and they did receive for the second year in, the, in a row for the Support Music Merit Award, uh, which is our second consecutive year. And it's awarded to, we're one of 148 high schools in the nation that were awarded this honor. Wow. So just congratulations to Alyssa, Paul, and Paula for all their hard work. Fantastic. And uh, just echoing just the support amongst the, the leadership team, the teachers and, and the board. Uh, Mr. Uh, Roberts and I are having some fun as well, putting out some videos. And each week we're going to do something a little bit different, working with uh, Mrs. Arise and the Spirit uh, Club. So we want to still keep the students active and the parents active as well. So so stay tuned to our to our social media pages to see what we have in store for everybody. Thank you, Mr. Carella. Mr. Leibrock? Hi there. Um, yeah, I, I've just uh, um, been been just uh, wowed by Mr. Brown and, and Miss Lyons and just learning from them. I, I couldn't ask for two better people to step into a situation like this with and uh, just trying to piece things together a little bit at a time at each of the buildings. It's a little strange at times when we do our videos because I don't really know my audience yet. Um, <laughs> but looking forward to getting to know them sometime soon. And uh on the, I think, uh, I think you stuff. scared a few with that April Fool's joke. <laughs> I, uh, I, I wanted to make sure that it was clearly an April Fool's joke. So hopefully, I, yeah, my else might fit. Take it very seriously. <laughs> um, but uh, still, kind of have my 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 foot in the athletic office a little bit as well, and and we are kind of just crossing our fingers. I, I know a lot of our, our uh, spring athletes are. Uh, really eager to, to get back out there. And obviously that coincides with our return to school. So, um, you know, hopefully if we are back, uh, we can get those kids back on the field for at least an abbreviated season. Uh, so we're still holding on to some hope, but obviously we'll kind of take things in stride as, uh, as things unfold uh, with the, the situation here. Great. Thank you. Um, Mr. Plagowitz, did you have anything you wanted to Yes, I'm uh, extremely appreciative to be part of such a, a great admin team um, and, and to have the support not only of the community, uh, the parents, the students, uh, but very in incredibly proud of the staff and the job that the special education staff from the aides to the related service providers and the teachers are doing um, to help provide as much as they can for the students with disabilities. Uh, I, I think... Um, you know, it, it, when we look at this as a whole, the collateral damages, uh, the impact that it's making on, on the negative impact that it makes on students with disabilities, uh, because they do need that hands-on, they do need that close proximity of the, the adults working with them and the related service providers. Um, tomorrow, uh, I'm meeting with the psychologists and the department chairs who uh, begin um, looking at how we're going to run annual review meetings for students with IEPs. Uh, to be able to, to um, look at the services that they've gone without um, by remote learning and, and how we can best provide some compensatory services for them and what that may look like. When this first started, we didn't anticipate it to go for another two weeks, and, and we're kind of up in the air where it's going to go from there, but we, we decided we were going to cancel all annual reviews until uh, May, and so we'll be on schedule for that to happen. Um, we just want to make sure that we're, we're – mindful of the students and, and the um, experiences that they've had for the last month uh, because it's not comparing apples to apples at this point. Right. Thank you. And thanks for staying on top of that stuff and, and just keep the board informed on, on just generally where those issues are as you see those arise. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Wicks, anything from a building and grounds perspective? That's all right. I can come back. Oh, there I'm you here. <laughs> um, yeah, I just want to thank everybody for uh, this. is It's really quite an experience, and it's, I think it's going uh, very well. Um, building grounds, we're getting um, a little bit ahead of the game uh, with, you know, some repairs uh, of the sidewalks out on Main Street, uh, or I should say uh, North Grove in Maine, um, and some work at the high school. And it's um, going along very well. Thank you very much. Mr. Clements, anything you wanted from a, the tech side? Thank you, Mrs. Covert. What a, an amazing community we serve. Uh, it's the adaptations of our students, parents, 
support of the board and administrative team just amazing and with the spotlight on my teammates like it is right now i just couldn't be more proud to work with those people they're standing tall and, and i'm just delighted to call them my teammates yeah they've Thank done a, can i just comment on that they've done a, yeah. a really great job i mean everyone has but uh, so much of this has relied on technology and and sometimes at this at this scale, we don't know how it's going to go. You know, when we uh, you know we roll it out to, to 1,800 students, but it's it's really uh, gone quite well. I mean, of course, you know, there's some some glitches along the way, and and we're still figuring out some of uh, the technologies that are available to us and trying to manage that as well. Uh, but I think uh, the technology uh, staff has just done a, a great job in supporting our teachers, our students, and their and their families. Great. All right. We are um, moving on to Mary Beth. Whoops. I'm sorry, Mary Beth. I just had a quick question after that. I'll finish just yeah, sure. um, just generally for Brian or whomever. Um, from the perspective of athletics, um, obviously school is not in session. How is this playing in terms of um, are the coaches still in contact with our student athletes? If they are, um, are they encouraging any type of practice? And if so, what are we doing in terms of making sure that that social distancing is happening? I'm just trying to understand because I know I've heard um, of, of different um, children being out and playing various sports or participating in various things in the community. And I'm just trying to understand if we have any involvement in that and, and what our role is in that. Kim, you know, I'll, I'll just I'll let Matt chime in on this, but I, I, I'll say this is that um, we have had some issues and, and we're going to be um, sending out another reminder. And, and Matt's going to be working with the coaches about kids being on, on our campus. You know, we um, we 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 really um, lock things down at the high school. Um, but just the other night, um, I got a report that kids were out there in the evening. So I've been working with Joe Ferrara and the police are, are trying to periodically check our grounds uh, and kicking, you know, kicking people off and telling them that they can't um, they can't be here for that, that whole social gathering element, you know. And so uh, it's it's definitely been a it's improved, but it's still uh, uh, something that we need to keep an eye on uh, to the best of our ability. But I don't know. I'll let Matt chime in here and. Sure. So, uh, so I've been in regular contact with the coaches as recently as yesterday with an email to provide them with a new update of the extension of the closing of school. And in each of those emails, I, I reiterate that you know they can certainly um, you know have the kids prepare as if we were going to return to to a season um, or when when the, the end of school of school uh, when, when the closing ends. Um, but I do put the reminders in there that they are not to and you know encourage any kind of practices or and I generally state that they should just be abiding by our, our social distancing guidelines um, as those constantly are adapting and, and changing. Um, so there, those reminders do go out on a regular basis. And Can you the remind them that, that, that our, our school facilities themselves are closed and, and to let their athletes know that those those the grounds are closed to them? Yes, and that went out. I think Mr. Russ had sent that out a week or so ago about the facility closing. Um, and I can certainly remind them uh, about those being closed as well. The biggest thing that I've been and telling all of our coaches when I've been in contact with them verbally is that um, the, we'll have a much better chance of returning to school and possibly having a, a spring season if people are starting to follow the, the social distancing guidelines. And, and that means not getting together as teammates and practicing um, and just, you know, as most places are, are saying is just to stay home and only go out when you need to. So, um, so I think if the, the student athletes kind of take it from, from that perspective is that if they, you know, just follow those guidelines, I think we'll have a much uh, better chance of, of getting back if there is a chance to, to get back onto the field and, and into athletics this spring. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. All right. We're moving on to visitors comments. Um, I received one, um, letter to be read at the meeting this evening. I believe you all, uh, at least the board members, received a copy of it from Sarah Fritz. Um, but for the public, I will read it. I am requesting that this letter to the East Aurora Board of Education be read at the April 8th, 2020 meeting in my absence. Um, I'm going to pause there for a minute because there's some information that's in the letter that I told Ms. Fritz. I did have an opportunity to speak with her in advance of the meeting that I said I would not, I would not be reading just for uh, privacy reasons, but I think you'll all get the, 
flavor of the letter in any event. Uh, she goes on, my name is Sarah Abend Fritz. Um, uh, for those unfamiliar with uh, type one diabetes, she says it is a chronic illness of the pancreas for which there is no prevention or cure. The only way to manage type one diabetes is to constantly monitor and adjust the delicate balance between insulin, the hormone that type one diabetes cannot produce and sugar. All day, every single day, a type one diabetic must know their current blood sugar and how much insulin or sugar they have in their body. Too much insulin can literally and quickly kill a person and not enough insulin will raise the blood sugar to a dangerous level, which can lead to a diabetic ketoacidosis, coma, and death. The maintenance, quick thinking, complicated math equations to determine the proper amount of insulin or sugar, and worry are constantly on the minds of type 1 diabetics, their parents, and school nurses. She comments that Mrs. Todaro was instrumental in helping children and parents navigate this life-altering life disease, manage calmly and efficiently type 1 diabetics and their parents to even give emotional boost and care and confidence when those who suffer from the condition felt confused or beaten by diabetes. She says, Mrs. Todaro has a culture in her office that has helped uh, individuals embrace their, their disease, treat it with accuracy and even humor sometimes, and possibly most important, she shows them that they can rely on other people um, rather than just parents and endocrinologists to understand how to safely treat type 1 diabetes. She expresses her confidence in Mrs. Todaro she, uh, because uh, the nurse at Parkdale sees single type 1 diabetics multiple times a day and also keeps a close eye on their numbers via an iPad. Um, um, Mrs. Todaro and parents are in very frequent conversations uh, in addition to the, to the students that suffer from the disease. She said it is commonly said that type 1 diabetics or their caregivers must make 300 more decisions per day than those without one type. Uh, type 1 diabetes. Uh, similarly, she says Mrs. Daigler has six uh, type 1 diabetics in her building uh, with more on the way um, uh, and that she is dealing with the needs of hundreds of other students, many of whom have critical allergies or asthma, and that this is just too much for one person in the management of children's health. She knows that a great number of students visit the nurse's office when there is emotional distress often going there before the counseling office. As a result, she says, I feel that the nurses in the district have been feeling the burden of the growing health and emotional needs of the students. In the years since there has been one nurse in each building, the prevalence of type one diabetes in the student population has gone from zero to at least seven. The other serious health conditions have also increased in numbers. Additionally, as the district has recognized the evolving needs of the students, new counselors, teachers, aides, social workers, et cetera, have been hired. This is a wonderful for the district, yet there is still a massive need for an extra nurse. The East Aurora School nurses are asked to work beyond their capacity with the shortage of hands and the volume of demands. Because of the considerate care of the nurses, the students who are medically dependent on the nurses are actually able to go to school. By jeopardizing the possibility of their access to a nurse, their right to a free and appropriate education is also jeopardized. These nurses are truly keeping our kids safe and the efficacy in which they can deliver critical care to children is hampered without the help of other qualified registered nurses who are actually familiar with particular diseases and students. This is actually about mitigating the serious risks and associated liabilities our district faces without an additional nurse. <clears throat> it's only a matter of time before they encounter a situation that cannot be handled by one nurse. I sincerely urge you to listen to the needs of the nurses, trust that they are the most informed people to make such requests, and please hire an additional nurse for the district. This nurse will be available as the substitute nurse in whichever school requires it, company students on field trips in order to allow the regular nurse to stay back, and treat the children she knows and alleviate the pressure and anxiety our wonderful EA school nurses encounter on a daily basis. 
Sincerely, Sarah Abend Fritz. As I did indicate before I read the letter, I did have an opportunity to talk to Ms. Fritz and I uh, uh, explained to her our process of um, a multi-year budget approach as we develop the budget uh, for, for next year, our uh, administrative efforts to put together a district priority list and evaluate those priorities. So Brian, with that, um, I'd ask you to take that letter and those comments and that suggestion back to your administrative team and evaluate that for, uh, you know, in terms of the, the budget priorities and the need that we um, uh, can associate uh, to that as compared to the other needs we have in the district. And, and then, it, um, you know, give us a, a comment back as you develop the budget on where that might fall in our list of priorities. Um, yeah, you know, just a quick comment on that. Um, Matt has, and I believe it's still on our list. Um, uh, when Matt was uh, working, he and Jerome were working with the nurses and 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 making a determination in terms of, uh, you know, and we've had we've added nurses over my tenure uh, since I started. Um, so now we have we have five full time nurses, um, which wasn't the case uh, just even a few years ago. Um, but again, recognizing the needs in, in all in all the school districts, not only in our schools, for East Aurora, but at Immaculate and at Waldorf, uh, we've definitely increased the nursing uh, services. And Matt has also made the suggestion about having a floating nurse, uh, which has been on our, our list of priorities. Um, but one thing that we have been able to do this year, and, and I, I I throw it out to him and, and, the, and the principals as well, is that we've actually been able to find coverage. We, we've in the past have had very difficult time finding substitutes, but this year, um, I believe Matt Brown at the middle school, it's, uh, how have things been? Yeah, so last year, meaning the 2018-2019 um, year, um, it was very difficult um, to get substitutes. When, when our nurse was unable to be at school, you know, for any very valid reason, um, we were struggling. I know Matt Librock and Jerome were working very hard. We tried to work with agencies to get substitute nurses. We called subs. I mean, they worked very hard, and there were still days where we we couldn't find a nurse. Um, so I would go sit in the in the nurse's office at times. Um, I know Mr. Librock spent some time doing that. We would have an aide in there, and then we would just um, you know make the phone calls if needed. Um, so it was very difficult this year. Um, to my recollection, I do not recall any days um, that we did not have a nurse in the building for the entire day. Um, so it's it's definitely gone a lot better this year. Brian, I, I can't recall that making the list on the budget presentations. Is that is that is that idea of a floating nurse on our on our budget it is, presentation? It is under athletics and wellness initiatives. Oh, yeah, I was I just, I just checked I, on I that. Hadn't, yeah. I hadn't noticed that um, before, so thank you for that. Yeah, so yeah, and no, it, and it's been there because of exactly kind of what Matt was explaining is that um, in the past we've really had some difficulties with with substitutes. This year it's been much better. I don't know if that's been the case at, at the elementary and at high school, um, and, but um, it's it's definitely improved. But nonetheless, having a floating nurse would really uh, help us to to solidify that all the way around. Okay, uh, I think we're then moving on to reports and discussion items. Um, so the first up is the 2020-2021 school year calendar. Yeah, yeah I Mr. apologize. Mangretti. I don't have this uh, queued up for the, the viewing public at home, and there are 15 of you, so thank you. Um, it, all of you should have a draft of the proposed calendar for next year, and, and if approved tonight, it will be on the website uh, uh, in the next day or so. Basically, it's just a rollover of this year's calendar. It's a calendar that worked well for us this year and actually the year before that. Uh, we seem to have found a, a nice spot of where we're putting our superintendent's conference days, how we're starting school, where the holidays fall. So um, if you like this year's calendar, you're going to love next year's calendar because uh, it's the same thing, but just um, obviously updated for, for where the holidays fall and the rest. Um, and that's it. I did notice that we are starting next year before Labor Day. And that just happens to be where Labor Day falls. Um, there's no other way for us to get in the days we need before that. So when Labor Day is early, we start after. But yeah, we would have the kids come the third and fourth, which is Thursday and Friday. 
and then they would have a three-day weekend and then uh, come back Tuesday the 8th uh, and really hit the ground running. We've done that a few times before. Um, it just It's just where Labor Day falls and how we have to dance around it. Okay. And it happens every eight years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, the other thing, the other good news around that, and I think we, we shared this uh, maybe last time, is that um, the legislation around voting uh, has changed. Mm-hmm. For, for school districts and other businesses. So we, we're, we're not obligated as long as they have a four hour window, uh, you know, before or after their shift, uh, which I think pretty much applies to all of our employees. Uh, so that's a good thing because we were having to schedule some of our staff development days around those, those circumstances, which we don't have to do anymore, which is a really good thing for our calendar. Did anyone have any questions around the calendar? All right, then we will move on. Next is the uh, business office operations and financial reports. Ms. George, I, I didn't mean to, before you start, I didn't mean to cut you off or, or not um, ask you earlier if you had anything to add and, and I knew you were coming up for a budget presentation. So um, I'm not sure if you needed anything in administrator comments. Okay, thank you. Um, I just wanted to also extend my sincere thanks and gratitude to the business office staff. Um, It's been difficult working from home, um, but they've all um, put in their time. They're all working very, very hard to make sure that our operations keep moving as um, efficiently as possible throughout this um, difficult period. Um, And with that being said, I'm happy to report in your in your documents on the financials are through the end of February. As of the end of February, the general fund had approximately a little more than $11 million um, on hand. Um, As of the end of February, we had spent approximately 57% of our budget and we have received 80% of our revenues. Um, So that's all good news. In our school lunch fund, um, as I've been indicating several months now in a row, revenues are exceeding expenditures again um, at about $12,000. So we're not making a huge profit. We're pretty flat, um, which is good news too. The federal fund started receiving on the money coming in from our approved grants in February which is good news. And um, the capital fund is moving along. We're almost done. We're almost at the end of um, end of the road for the, for this capital project. So um, that's what I had. Um, Thank you. Thanks, Joanne. Does anyone have any questions for Ms. George? Yeah. Yeah. Just briefly. um, The, the school lunch program as of February was, um, was doing well. Well, How are we paying for 25,000 lunches a week uh, um, and breakfast that we're shipping out uh, on the buses? Yep, every meal is a reimbursable meal as if it was a free meal. So it's being subsidized through the federal and state government. So we don't have to budget for it at all. In in other words, we we are reimbursed uh, in the same year that we expend it. Uh, that's the way they are telling me it is going to work. Um, Unfortunately, uh, for the past week, the child nutrition portal site has been down. Um, We've been anxious to start reporting our sales, um, the deliveries, so that we can get those reimbursements. As of today, the child nutrition portal was still down. So there's still a question mark about when we'll get money. Thank you. When it'll come in. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I just want to thank Joanne and, and um, especially uh, Jen Appenheimer, who works in, in, in the office with Joanne, has done a an incredible job um, behind the scenes helping us to um, uh, manage and negotiate a lot of these deadlines that we have uh, in front of us, uh, getting audit requests and all kinds of things from the state um, and and. Sometimes, you know, I think they did a really nice job with with the regions uh, backing off on that. And I think it, 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 
that made a lot of sense and a lot of people are pleased with the direction that they've gone in. Uh, but then there's been other things that they've been requesting from us that are that are really um, are difficult and challenging. And she has taken on a lot of those projects um, on her own and has, has really just done a brilliant job uh, getting those those things in on time and making sure, like you're saying, for funding and all those types of things, she's done a really, really great job. The whole staff has. I mean, they really have stepped up and working from home in the office, it's never easy, especially with like the, the types of software that they're working with, the financial packages and things like that. My, my, you know, Sue, my secretary, again, has done a fantastic job on being as, as, as uh, nimble and just responsive as she possibly can be. And so, uh, yeah, they've just done a really, really great job in terms of keeping this thing moving forward and, and keeping it afloat. And a lot of it, that goes behind the scenes and, you know, it's kind of unknown. Uh, right. they've done a great job. Yep. Well, we are appreciative. This is a massive undertaking for folks. Yeah. It's and a, quite a shift from what you're running school when it's an operation. <laughs> Very different. Yeah. Uh, moving on to the preliminary 2020 with the draft five of the preliminary 2021 budget. Um, that's you, Brian and, and Joanne again. Uh, are you going to, uh, Mr. Norbretti, are you going to be yep. presenting yep. that so folks at, at, that are listening can see it, watching can see it? Yeah, we're going to shift over to that. So we'll just need a couple, there's a couple second lag here um, between Dennis and I. Uh, and I would just ask if when you're done, if, if because it's, it takes a couple clicks. Any comments about the spreadsheet, or I'm sorry, about the PowerPoint, we address those first. I'll be able to do it. And then any budget discussion, um, it, that, but I, I can't, once I shut it down, it takes a little while to come back up. So right. if we could just hold tight one second. Um, and then we'll just get a confirmation from Dennis um, once it's made its way over to the YouTube. It was between him and I, we're working four computers here. So hang on one second. It was between him and I, we're working four computers here. So hang on one second. Looks good. Between him and I, we're working four. Oops. <laughs> the YouTube. <laughs> there you go. You good, Mark? Uh, yep, you should be all set. Yep. Okay. Wonderful. So, um, all right. Well, uh, welcome everybody and all those who are listening from home. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate you being here. Uh, you know, this is probably, our, I think, our, our fifth or sixth iteration of, of, of the budget, and it's been certainly a work in progress. Um, uh, very different from past years where by this time we would um, pretty much know where, where we're headed for next year uh, with the uncertainty uh, of the, of the current circumstances and some of the adjustments that are going to be coming from the state. Uh, this is going to be a work in progress over the next several weeks and and, and possibly even months. So uh, if you want to go on to the next, next thing, great, the agenda. Uh, again, we'll just take a look at the values and our considerations as we build the budget. Uh, the finance committee update, what we've talked about most recently. Uh, we'll look at the levy and the rate and the equalization and also the tax cap limit. Um, we'll look at projected revenues and expenditures and then our long range priorities. And then we'll look at the calendar, which has changed uh, significantly uh, over the last couple of weeks. Here it is again, the values and vision are the driving force behind all of our decision making, uh, you know, and always focused on what's in the best interest of our students and, and our staff. And here's the considerations that we've been using for the last several years during the budget process. Again, first and foremost, it's the interest of our students uh, that we consider uh, that we're exercising good care and judgment in regard to the resources that have been entrusted to us by the community who have been very generous to us over the last several years. Uh, we're going to conduct our, our, our business openly. Uh, as we are right now, I think we've been very responsive to this current crisis and, and allowing people to participate and also providing the information for them after the meeting in, in an easily accessible manner. And then again, we're future focused, even through all of this, you know, we're continuing to focus on uh, where do we go from here? You know, I think again, um, over the last couple of weeks, it's been, it's been kind of an exhausting process to be quite honest. Uh, and in many ways, more difficult than it is on a typical week, uh, but the administrators have done a, a beautiful job leading each of their staffs, uh, just very committed and putting in all the time and effort that it takes to to get this done as well as, as we possibly can. And 
and we continue to look forward uh, to next year and, and what can we do differently and do it in a better way. Uh, so that continues to be a very positive thing for us. So here it is, the Budget Finance Committee. We started way back in August, and, and again, that's just a uh, just a really broad view of preparing for the school year to start. Uh, and then, you know, we, we took a couple months off as, as the school year began, and we started meeting again in November. Uh, we met in January and in February a couple of times. Uh, and then our late, latest meeting was uh, on April 6th, uh, which was just a few days ago. And, um, excuse me. Um, so what we did is we, again, we're reviewing... Um, um, new things, uh, reviewing the budget calendar. Uh, we still don't know when the budget date will be. Uh, they said it will be after uh, June 2nd. And so we're really anxious to find out what that is because that will help us to set the other uh, important dates along the way in terms of the process. It does appear that they're going to have us go through uh, an actual vote. Uh, and maybe when it comes closer to that date, I don't know if they're going to allow people to actually come out and vote. We'll have to wait and see, but that's what their intention is. Um, we reviewed the uh, 1920 revenues and expenditures, and then we reviewed the new estate aid runs, which unfortunately um, decreased by just over $148,000. So um, that, that was uh, unfortunate, but uh, compared to other school districts, it, it's not quite as bad. So we, it, we're, we're going to wait and see because there's going to be another adjustment in May. Uh, hopefully within the first 10 days, we should know what that looks like. Uh, and then we reviewed uh, items discussed at cabinet uh, to remove from the, uh, the March 25th version of the proposed budget. And the next date right now is kind of unknown. We're just going to kind of play that by ear as more information becomes available. Brian, are we anticipating that the um, decrease will even be bigger when we get the the new information in May? Uh, yeah, uh, yes, Terry, I, I believe it will be a large okay. increase, yes. Okay. Thank and, you. Brian, and Brian, just so I understand this, this decrease is directly related to what's happening right now with COVID-19. Is that what this is related to? Yeah, yes, it is. Okay. Um, yeah, just the, uh, the, the, um, what the governor is predicting as a, a deficit is more than twice what it originally was. And so these adjustments are in anticipation that that is going to come to fruition. Thank you. Sure. And so here it is, well, financial rebuilding again, you know, we're, we're looking at um, rebuilding our finances over the last several years. Um, you know, we've worked really hard uh, since like 16, 17, when we were the most fiscally stressed uh, school district in the state uh, to rebuild our uh, appropriated and unappropriated fund balances and also bring our reserves back into uh uh, better shape. And you can see that we've done that. Uh, there's in the employees uh, benefit accrued liability. That's that's gone up. Also in, in the ERS uh, and TRS, both uh, have uh, improved uh, from where we were back when it was just the ERS was down to $5,000. Um, so we've been making adjustments on the capital project, the repair reserve, um, you can see the tax cert has been uh, has actually gone down uh, because of the situation that we had last year with Fisher Price, um, and so the capital technology project. I mean, the reserve again is up to two hundred thousand. So again, we've done a nice job, but there's still room to grow here. And here it is. You know, our fiscal our fiscal stress score has has gone down again this year. We were at like seventy three point three. Uh, our score went down to twenty eight point three uh, in in December of two thousand eighteen, and in January of this year, it went down to ten, which is really really uh, positive. But it still is more than double uh, the other average Western New York schools. So we still have some work to do. So here it is, the tax levy uh, limit calculation. And we've gone through this several times, but just again, for those people who are new to the presentation, uh, Joanne works on this, uh, you know, after the first of the year and where our tax cap uh, calculation comes out. So it's it's 5.21%. So if we stay uh, at 5.21% or lower, we are considered tax cap compliant. Um, some of the legislative change, the BOCES capital exclusion was added and that added a 0.4% increase. So now we're allowed to exclude our, our costs for the BOCES construction project. And also we've had a very strong uh, tax base growth factor of 0.99%, so just under 1% related to growth within the community, which, which correlates to about uh, $234,000. And that, Brian, just causes that 
tax cap um, calculation to go up. To go up, exactly right. So if that growth factor is flat, so then it would be about one percent less. But right. we have strong growth over the last several years, so we've watched that factor uh, have a larger impact on our tax cap uh, limit uh, right. over the last several years. Yes. And so um, here it is. We're also interested in the rate. And, and so what we're, we're happy to see is the rate is actually projected to be uh, less than the levy at about 4.15%. Uh, and there's a number of factors. And you can see there's some blanks here because Joanne still has to wait for this information over the next several months before this can actually be completed. Uh, but she does her best to, to estimate what that will look like. Uh, and, and actually, it's it, it, she's been very accurate. So <laughs> her estimations are usually very, very, very good. Um, but, but we're glad to see that the, the rate is, is coming in at, at, at less than the levy at 4.15%. And so here it is, is our expenditure. You know, Mark, can we go back one, one slide there? Just um, the one thing I did want to mention about this is that um, uh, when we look at a, a, a house that's assessed at, at, at $100,000, um, the increase in, uh, in taxes for the year is, is going to be approximately $60 uh, for the year. And so here, um, yes, yeah, so uh, expenditures. Um, so here is our gap remains at, at $412, $388. Um, we, we had worked really hard to bring this down, but unfortunately, we reduced it by about $152,000 since we were going to make uh, to the budget. Um, and then we, we got the $148,000 reduction in our aid. So it, it's been a wash. So we'll be working on this for the next presentation in two weeks. Uh, and hopefully we'll be able to really shrink this gap and we'll have more information um, hopefully by that time. But we won't have all the information until until sometime in May uh, when we can actually make a much closer prediction. Um, so here again, uh, our expenditures, um, you can see uh, some, some larger increases in the area of like salaries, a small decrease in fringe benefits, uh, and and you can go through some some increases in equipment and we've talked about that at previous uh, board meetings just things that we need to purchase that we've been putting off for for many years um, but it does show us a gap of about four hundred twelve thousand. and so here's our revenues um you know so what do our projected revenues look like um property taxes again um look like they're going up uh nicely uh at about 5.26 percent which which helps uh considerably with the with um Balancing the budget, um, uh, state aid again, uh, an increase, um, but less than what we were anticipating. Um, building aid again, that's something that we usually uh, count on. That's predicted to us by our financial advisors. Sales tax, um, again, looking at a um, $100,000 increase. And that's something that we're going to be looking at <clears throat> because of the current conditions in the state and the amount of sales tax that's being generated. Uh, any comments on that at all, Joanne? On um, our sales tax that we're receiving in 1920 is on track to hit the 2.1 million. Um, so that'll produce a little extra in the current year budget. Um, we, we have one more quarter to receive. Um, it's all going to depend on how long the COVID-19 goes on. If it affects one quarter, I think we'll be okay. If it affects more than one quarter, we may have to adjust. Right. Okay. Thank you. Joanne and Brian, can I ask a quick question? Sure. So we're, our proposal is 4.15%. So am I correct in saying if I look at the property tax items, it's 22,574,452. So we have under the tax cap limit, we have room of another 1%, which would be 225,000. Um, no. 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 But, but you're looking at that's the that's the rate I think. Did you say four point one five? So I'm going to your previous screen where 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 we're saying we could go up to five point two one, but we're only doing it at four point one five. No. So there's one percent difference there. Yeah. No, the difference is between the levy. The levy's going up the five point two one percent, but the rate isn't going to go up five point two one percent because of the growth in assessed value. So our budget is is max at what we would Correct. do. Correct. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. 
Brian, can I ask a question about the um, expenditure proposal? Sure. At the last meeting, um, Joanne, we talked about um, the BOCES number, and um, we were hoping to have that looked into for this meeting. Was that possible? Um, I've been receiving information on that in dribs and drabs. It's been very difficult with um, the BOCES staff is also working from home. So we've been emailing each other what I exactly need. And as they go into the office, because they don't have the information that they need at home with them, they've been sending it to me. Um, and last night I received more information. So I'm, I'm hoping to get closer with that. Okay, thank you. And the one, the one, I guess, good thing about it is that, you know, all the, the reporting dates are delayed. So this, Terry, will give us more time to continue to discuss this as, as these, these things become available. Okay. So we, we, will, we will have more time and, and, and more meetings. So like normally we would be locking things up like at this meeting or at the next meeting at the latest. You know, we'll be able to go into May um, because um, the, the vote's going to be pushed off till sometime in June. Right. Yeah, Terry, we came to an agreement in the finance committee that we're going to know pretty well where the outcome of 2018, 19, or 1920 is going to be before we finalize 2021. And and with the information that Joanne shared there, they're doing a lot of work behind the scenes. Right. Thank you. Brian, uh, on the, uh, rev the revenue uh, side, uh, the uh, back one slide, please. Uh, if Mark could turn back to the revenue slide. Yeah, just give him a second, Dan. Yeah, I think there's sorry a about that. glitch. Oh, Mr. Mambretti is He's disconnected. Well, I can. I I I don't need you to. You have it in front um, of you, Dan. Um, uh, I do not. But I, I, have copy to, in front of us. I have it committed to memory. The, <laughs> the, um, <laughs> the line associated with. State. I'm back. I don't know where you are, but I'm back. <laughs> no, okay. Are, can, can you, you, back can us you up go one back slide? slide? Sorry. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you. The line. I was gonna. I was gonna really demonstrate my my prowess by by uh, doing this from memory, but it's the 8.33% increase in state aid, less the building aid. If you could just explain that, because we just got through saying there was a decrease in in uh, what the state aid is going to be. So why is that 8.33%? Jo Joanne, do you want to take that? Yes, okay. that's because um, it's what you're comparing to. So it's $148,000 less than it was at our last meeting on 325. So and you're saving, saying at that point, the, the, um, the increase in state aid was even more than 8.33%. Correct. Yeah, okay. And that increase has to do with, um, we're comparing our budget to budget revenue numbers that we had a year ago. And what the governor compares it to is what we're actually receiving this year. And oh, what we budgeted last year, in particular, BOCES, what we're really receiving in BOCES aid is more. Does everybody so, follow that? Right. It's in your budget binders under state aid. There's, um, there's an analysis. I don't have my binder at the desk with me. That's fine. It's it's just that um, yes. Yeah, so so what you're saying is that the uh, when you look back to our budget, that isn't necessarily the amount that we actually receive. Correct. Right. Thank you. Okay, Brian. Okay. Hey, Mark. Okay, great. <clears throat> so the new gap um, is um, $412,388. And so what's changed since two weeks ago is that our revenues decreased by, by state aid of $148,007. But we did uh, decrease expenditures by $152,689. Um, so um, that was a 
uh, decrease of just four hundred and six uh, four thousand six hundred eighty two dollars from last from last meeting. Um, so so we'll take a look at what we reduced on um, on the next couple of slides. Yeah, so we we pulled out the um, the steam teacher uh, and the 1.0 FTE and the additional music. We realized we we would need that. Uh, the one thing that we do need to consider as we move forward is that the teacher at Parkdale will cause our, our class sizes to increase. Uh, we believe at fourth grade to a to a place that we are trying to avoid. So that would be one of the one of the the um, uh, the positions that we would really want to consider first if we can possibly add it back in. Um, next down where it says partially included under the high school, uh, we pulled back on those electives to move towards or possibly move towards an eight period day. Uh, there still will be a few additional electives again, just to manage the schedule and also to, to possibly reduce a couple of classes, um, but not to the degree that we were hoping to do originally. Um, here again, the social worker we removed. This would also be, I think, at the top of our restoration list if we uh, indeed are able to um, uh, add some, some or restore some positions into the into the budget. Um, uh, we're, you know, we're seeing you know obviously just a greater need across the board, and I think under these current circumstances, uh, you know, there's certainly an escalation in in the mental health of our of our students and their families, and so we we see this as definitely one of the uh, the most important restorations, if we can possibly do that. Uh, and you can see the five core areas, uh, that's for uh, eighth grade. Uh, again, that will have a, a negative impact on, on those class sizes at that grade level. And so, uh, yep, the athletics, uh, we need to keep the uh, trainer, uh, the increase for the trainer in because we need a trainer and that's just the contractual obligation that we have. So that needed to stay. Uh, the reallocation of all the technology, again, uh, is something that we'll have to look at depending on, on the circumstances of the budget uh, as we move forward. Uh, but these are reallocations of monies from other areas of the budget. So this is not new money. It's just moving the money from one place to another. Again, um, as we move forward, depending on the circumstances, we will need to look at the reallocations and, and possibly uh, um, eliminate some of those projects from, from the budget as well. But Brian, before you leave this particular sure. slide, yep. I think it's important to note that the floating nurse is still there. Mm -hmm. So at this point in time, uh, we're still uh, addressing the issue that was discussed earlier in the meeting. Yeah. Yeah, and I apologize. I, I, I don't recall seeing that on that um, wellness initiative, but uh, I appreciate that it's been there. Yeah, yeah. It has. An, and and uh, Matt and Mike Lybrock and Jerome have been talking about this because they've, they've kind of shared the nurses' responsibilities and overseeing them. Uh, and they've um, they've been talking about this uh, for several years uh, and, and trying to come up with solutions to find substitutes to make sure that we have nursing services every day. Uh, for the um, for the entire year, uh, certain years have been are more difficult than others. Like this year, they've really worked it out. We've got some subs on the list, and it's worked nicely. But we really feel a floating nurse would help to eliminate that eventually. Uh, K to twelve, and then here again, uh, some reallocations uh, related to administrative restructuring. We began that. We have a teacher on special assignment in for for Matt Librock right now. Uh, and that was planned for the rest of the year. We're going to be looking at that structure and, and, and sharing some things with the board at a future board meeting in regard to the administrative structure and, then, and their needs for some additional support. Uh, we created the assistant principal position that Matt Librock is in right now, K-8. to uh, And then we're looking for uh, possibly one clerical position. We needed two. We've had a, lots of reductions in the clerical, especially in, in central office. Uh, and we just need some additional supports there. Uh, and then uh, continuing with our capital outlay for uh, for the would be the 19, uh, 20, 2021 20, school year. <laughs> and and Joanne, when you grabbed the you grabbed that one clerical position and and adjusted the cost, then I assume it, I'm um, as opposed to grabbing that full hundred and fourteen thousand for two. Correct. Okay. So that was one of the um, reductions. Okay. Yeah. So, and I think that is it. Yes, that's it. And Brian, so if, we, if I could just chime sure. in at that point for, for 
folks that are listening because because we've kind of been living and breathing this for several months and I don't know how many people that are on watching um, the meeting now that haven't been involved in the process as, as much as, as we have. These priorities um, sort of have developed over, over the last several years and are sort of a, a living, breathing document as something, you know, emerges as being something of a priority that, that hadn't before it gets added to the list. But as we move forward and the governor is talking about uh, um, additional cuts to state aid for next year, that will necessarily impact um, the ability to do any of the priorities on the list, right? I mean, that, rea that that's just the reality. Yes, I, and that's where I was saying some of those um, where a lot of the priorities, the restorations that we were trying to do with new money uh, have pretty much been eliminated. Oh, um, right. And then there's reallocations. So where we're at, we, we, we've had um, some excess in certain areas of the budget to move them over to pay for these. Those may may then not be able to be reallocated as well, right. depending on, on how that unfolds, not only this year, but as you're saying, for uh, not only for 2021, but for 21-22. Right. And my point only is to, to encourage folks to continue to log in and, and watch our board meetings and hopefully attend a board meeting when the pandemic is over and we can can have the meeting in person again, just, you know, stay tuned and stay watching because um, this this budget development is going to continue and until May and we aren't going to necessarily have answers tonight, but um, we will in the next few months. Okay. Yeah, I agree. So here we are. It's just as, as the recap, our current budget is $36,331,854. Uh, the increase is uh, uh, just over $2.2 million for a total of $38,522,203. Uh, the increase in the tentative budget is a, a 6.09% increase budget to budget, a levy increase of 5.21, and then a tax rate increase of 4.15. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, the estimated approximate impact for uh, uh, assessed valued home at $100,000, which is the one we use is about, yep, go ahead. Full value home. Full value. Okay. So we got to change that. I, I I know when the words are coming out of my mouth. I apologize. We gotta <laughs> Sorry, that's value. That's full value. <laughs> full value. Yes. Thank you. So we got to change that. It's about $60 um, uh, for the year. Uh, and so the remaining gap is unfortunately $412,388. And uh, it's something that we're going to continue to work on as we get more information. Um, over the next uh, several weeks. And so here's the budget calendar. You can see we're at, we're at April 8th, and this is the uh, we, uh, potential adoption of the district budget, but things have really, really changed for us. And so we basically crossed out all the rest of them because we don't know exactly <laughs> what's going to happen. Uh, but we'll, we'll have a meeting on the 23rd, correct? And that, that's a Thursday, just so everybody's aware. Um, I, I'm not exactly sure why we, we changed that date. We did that uh, early on. Early on, right? Exactly. Yep. But it there just, was a trip planned. Yeah. Or there was something, yep. There was something getting in the way. So it's on the 23rd, which is Thursday night. Uh, and then, um, yeah, then we'll go from there. The next uh, scheduled meeting would then be on the 6th of May. Okay. Um, before we get off the slides, I just want to go around the board table and, and ask and just get a confirmation that nobody has any question on the on the slides. Jessica? Uh, no, yeah, we can. I have a question about priorities, but I okay. don't suppose we need the slides for that. All right. Terry? No, no questions about the slides. John Segetti? None. Sorry. Oh, okay. Judy Malice? Nope, I'm good. Thank you. All right. Kim Daniel? No, thank you. And Mr. Brunson. Thank you. No. All right. Thank you. All right. Okay. Um, and now I just want to go make sure we go around the, the table and, and answer everybody's questions about just the, the budget. Jessica, you said you had something on priorities. I do. First, thank you, Brian and Joanne and teams for all the efforts you're doing here. I know that's crazy with all the moving pieces. So thank you. Um, 
as you're looking, I know that the priority list included items that were re funds were coming from being reallocated from other sources or they were new funds. Now that we have removed some of the items that came from new funds, are you re-looking at the priorities since you have some in there that were, and I know that going down the road, you're probably going to have to pull out a whole lot more, um, but are you re-looking at the whole list overall to consider whether there needs to be a different reallocation? Yeah, Jess, as, as I was saying before, you know, we, we just kind of, um, went back and pulled out basically all the new money. Mm -hmm. uh, that, you know, we were thinking to restore the positions that had been lost. And then, as I said, I think some of our priorities are, is, is, is the, the social worker maintaining class size at, at Parkdale, uh, also trying to maintain class sizes at, at the middle school and high school. Uh, so we're trying to find some balance there. So it very well could be, as we look at it over the next two weeks, um, how do we, those reallocations to buy certain equipment or other things, maybe that money needs to be reallocated uh, to support those positions if it indeed is, is ongoing savings. Some of those reallocations are for purchase of one-time expenses, so we wouldn't want to use those reallocations to support a position, but some of them are more ongoing, so those are the types of things that we have to like evaluate that, that we'll have for you at the next round. Uh, gotcha. Yeah. It, yeah. Yes, I understand that one. It might be helpful for future presentations to um, mark those in a different way, the ones that are one-time funds. Yeah. Um, sure. I think folks will have a hard time stomaching some of the purchases, but they won't understand that it you can't fund a teacher with the one-time funds. Right, right, exactly. Yeah, I think that's, real, that's a great point is that some of those reallocations, again, like I said, are are supporting the purchase of a of a truck, for instance, and people would say, "Why well, don't well, don't purchase the truck? You know, you hire the person back." But that doesn't work that way because that truck is a one time expense, right? And it, and it wouldn't yeah. be supported moving forward. So that's, that's this the is, same point. This is probably a good time to remind folks that that in addition to to wanting to reduce class sizes and to um, um, get us out of fiscal stress and to build up our reserves again, one of the one of the uh, one of the budget directives from the board of education was to make sure that any restoration that we put back or anything that we add back into the budget that it is sustainable but we don't want to have a, a teacher funded by a you know foregoing a truck purchase because it just means we have to um, eliminate that position a year from now and and the board has you know all of us have been here long enough to see the the danger of, of doing it that way. And so that's, you know, one of the things we've said is, is it needs to be sustainable. We want to be able to say, you know, moving forward that, that, that we can keep it. And unfortunately things like we're, you know, currently facing this pandemic is, is, has the potential to throw that directive into a little bit of a, of a, a, a lurch, but, you know, the goal is to, to make sure that we can weather any storm and when, at, when we keep that, you know, when we add something back in. Yeah. Um, yes. And I think, uh, Mary Beth, just a comment on that is, um, it, you know, as we've been talking to uh, the representatives from the state and, and my superintendent's group, we also talked about the need to to continue to build our reserves and our uh, unappropriated fund balance um, because of the uncertainty of not 2021, but 21, 22. Right. So it's, it's again, finding that balance about how much do we need to put away? How much do we spend now? Because we need to do certain things. Uh, and then also the sustainability is a, a critical piece of all of it. Right. Uh, Mr. Brunson, did you have something? Thank you. Yes. Uh, two things. Uh, piggybacking on your comment about sustainability, um, there are several issue several decisions that we made over the last couple of years uh, that uh, were critically important to the educational program and that we asked as as we were doing them whether they were sustainable and one of those was class sizes uh, we we've been working really hard to not exceed certain levels of class sizes um, and so I, I would just caution that as we plan for next year's budget, that we may have to pause a little bit on some of the restorations that we hope to, to accomplish. We may have to pause a little bit on some of the new initiatives that we hope to accomplish, accomplish. 
but we should not move backward on things that we've already um, resolved. And that is, in my view, uh, the class size situation at Parkdale as an example. Uh, the, the, uh, you know, I, I don't want to see us moving forward on further initiatives and adding new, new programs and find that we are at the same time creating classes of 27, 28, 29 at Parkdale. I, I think that would be a, uh, um, uh, that would be a mistake. And I think it would be un unfortunate. So I, I would caution that we try to retain those, um, decisions that we've made in the last year or two uh, the, with regard to their sustainability and with regard, in particular, with regard to the, uh, the educational program. And the second point I wanted to make was uh, in planning next year's budget, I think we need to build in um, some flexibility. The, the, uh, the governor did it with his, with his budget for this year, and it was it was easy for him. He just said, "Well, if we don't get the revenue, we'll just reduce our expenditures," and that's the 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 dilemma that we're going to see with regard to uh, perhaps having a de decline further in our state aid. Uh, we we don't have that same. Um, uh, ability that he does to simply uh, to simply uh, make a change uh, like that but but so I think we need to be creative and we need to look for things that that will be in the 2021 budget that we may not need to spend so that if if we approve a budget and it moves forward and then we find a couple of months later that we're getting a significant decrease in uh, uh, in our um, uh, to sales tax revenue, for instance, or a, or a further reduction in state aid, that we have some things that we put in the budget that we uh, that we have not yet expended and that we can back off on spending. Uh, so if you if for instance you're higher you're planning on a um, uh, a new uh, social worker for instance uh, the uh, we could take the same measure that we did with regard to some other positions recently where we started them halfway through the year instead of starting uh, in September and that allowed us to have uh, some flexibility with regard to what the total cost of that decision would be for the year. So those are my two points. I don't want to see us going backward on class sizes, and I don't want to see us uh, having a budget that's so tight that it has no flexibility in it. Thank you, Dan. Those are two, two really good points, Wigan. Yeah. I agree with that. Um, um, anyone else around the table? Jessica, anything else? No, I'm good now. Thanks. All right. Um, John, anything? Nope. Thank you for everything. Terry, anything? Um, yeah. Um, well, I'm sure we all are disappointed that we're not able to add all of the things back that we had hoped to add back based on the last couple of meetings. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm very happy that at this point we're not cutting any positions. Um, and I want to um, stress that I really agree with Dan that about class sizes, um, I think we need to keep them down next year, especially after coming back from a completely different learning environment that the um, students are currently in. I think it's going to be imperative that our class sizes stay small for next year. I don't, uh, and thank you so much. I don't know, Joanne and um, Brian, how you're doing this with constant, um, with the fluidness of what we're getting from the state. And it's, I don't know how you're doing this, but thank you very much for what you're doing. Okay, stay tuned. Judy, Malice, anything? Just, I agree 100% on keeping those class sizes low. Dan's 100% right on that. And uh, yeah. that would just be my only thought. Okay. Uh, Kim, anything? Um, I, I also agree with, with Dan's comment, not only with respect to the class sizes, but also with respect to, to trying to maintain some degree of flexibility in the budget, because I think, unfortunately, we're going to, you know, we're going to be in a you know, in a tough situation, depending on how this all plays out with the pandemic. And the other thing that I did like to see that was still prioritized is the social worker, because as we've talked about a lot, um, you know, that's, that's definitely a need. So um, that's it. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Um, Brian, do you have enough um, direction from the board? I mean, it's, 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 it's very, it's not like we can give you much without knowing the governor's numbers. 
and I, I would expect that we'll know sort of a, every couple of weeks, you know, every month is an eye opener in terms of the information that we will have to be able to prepare a budget. Do you think in two weeks time, you'll be able to close that 412 before we get to May with a potential additional cut? Um, that, yeah, that would be our intention is that like as Joanne continues to work uh, on the BOCES piece uh, and again, I uh, want to thank her. It's as Terry said, it's been it's really been crazy, <laughs> you know, in terms of just trying to manage all the changes that are coming her way. And so she's done a, a really fantastic job in terms of devoting the time to try to work through all the pieces of the budget. And with that BOCES um, hopefully coming through. And, and and join having time to 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 work through it, and 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 then looking at the other pieces of the budget, you know, we're really hopeful to try to, uh, uh, you know, eliminate that gap. I mean, we just, we have to. We don't have a choice. And and then we'll see where it goes from there. And 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 again, considering the reallocations and the priorities of the board, because I think we're in agreement that social worker and class size are things we want to maintain our focus on. That we and doing a really nice job with over the last several years. And, and, and so what we're seeing is an uptick in, in, the, in, the, in, in the overall size of, of, of Parkdale. That's why there's that need for that extra section because we, we're anticipating a large kindergarten and we're losing a smaller fourth grade. So therefore that extra section is needed to maintain that. What we have right now are, are pretty even class sizes across the board. If that doesn't happen, you know, just talking with Jess preliminarily, it would be, you know, a larger fourth grade, you know, those class sizes would, would right. definitely swing up again. So that's what we need to focus on. And then I think too, you know, we knew the social worker was a priority just as part of our, um, our programming around mental health and wellness prior to this. And now I think, you know, this certainly has, is, is, is taking its toll on, on our students and, and their families. And, and, you know, there's, there's additional, mental health needs, there's no question about it. So I think that position, of course, is, is going to be, is going to be vital as well. Right. Brian, you're, you're, okay. no, go sorry. ahead, Dan. Just no, one quick, quick question. Is there anything in the current draft of the budget that gives you some unallocated staffing money? Yes. Yep. There's, there's money's built in. Um, always, you know, there's always a, a still, even, even under these circumstances, there's always some monies that are not allocated and that's good because the you know that uh, traditionally that was where you went when class sizes increased and you needed to hire another teacher so yeah. i'm glad to hear that we have that flexibility built in still yes thank you right and i and i just want to echo dan's point and on um you know not just on the maybe even with the social worker but but anything that we add in the budget that you cannot expend um, right away, uh, you know, even one-time funds can get used to help us replenish reserves if we find that that this goes on for an extended period, or the, yes. the budget numbers for next year look like we're going to have some some serious um, reductions from 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 the state. So, mm -hmm. um, I think we can, you know, finalize a budget through May, but it's going to have to be expended in a manner that might be different than what we what what we normally would would do. Mm -hmm. All right. Anybody else? I, I, I think I went around the, the table and does any administrator want to chime in and say anything? Okay. Then we are moving on. There are no additional items for board discussion, no legislation on the agenda. So we'll go right to the consensus agenda. Is there any board member who wishes to remove either of the items from the consensus? All right. Hearing none, may I have a motion to approve the consensus agenda? So moved. Moved by Dan. Second. Seconded by John. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Carried 7 0. There's uh, several items requiring board action. Item A. Mary Beth, can we take just a two minute break? Uh, yep. Two, yep, great. Yep. So we're going to take just a, a two minute recess and we will um, reconvene in a few minutes.
Hello? Yeah. Call Mary Beth. Yeah. We're working on it. Just, just hold tight one second. Right. Everything's okay. Mr. Mambretti? Yes, yes. Uh, can we have, um, uh, do you need to have a cell phone to be able to call into the back end of the meeting or? Um, yeah, you can call. Oh, can, um, we do it? can we do it from a landline? Yeah, you could do that too. So okay. Um, okay. I, I will, I will, yeah. 
Let me give me two seconds and we'll take care of it. Hang on one second. Thank you. From a landline. Yep. Should be go, good to go in just one minute. Everything's all right. I just had a technical snafu. I'd also like to give a shout out to the four people who are 30 seconds away from getting a tenure vote for hanging in there. We'll, we'll be right with you. Mr. Mambretti? Uh, yes, yes. And is, that, is that ready to go now? Um, no, not quite yet. We're working on it. Okay. Hang on. I'm trying to get confirmation, so just hold tight. I'll let you know as soon as I know. Hey, Mark. Yep. Mr. Mambretti? Yes. Uh, I've got somebody working on our, our what we got going on right away. Okay. So we should be good in a few minutes, a couple minutes. Okay. Okay. And it's, okay. Just let's just hold tight. We'll solve this one way or the other. Sure, I've got it. Uh, we're working on it. Thank you. Mr. Mabretti, we should be all set in just a second. Yeah. Okay. Um, just looking for the number. Yep. Oh, we, I think we'll be good now. Okay. Yeah, right. I, I, I'm here. Okay. I'm back. Wonderful. Sorry. <laughs> Technical issue. All right, folks. Technical. <laughs> yes. Thank that you. was a long two minutes, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, I'll explain later. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all for hanging in there. And I, uh, yes. uh, we can quickly move through these items requiring board action. 
Item A, the superintendent recommends the Board of Education approve the modified and varsity wrestling, varsity cheerleading, and varsity <coughs> indoor track winner 2020 sports merger with the Holland Central School District and authorize the superintendent to execute and sign that agreement. May I have a motion? So moved. Moved by Dan. Second. Second. Seconded by Judy. Discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Carried. <clears throat> Zero. Items B, C, D, and E. I, I want to thank all you folks um, who are getting granted tenure this evening for sticking with us. And I apologize that we didn't think to move that up a little sooner in the in the, the meeting. I apologize <clears throat> for that. Um, but nonetheless, this is all good news and wonderful things to act on. This is probably uh, part of the most, one of the most favorite things for a board member to do is to be able to recognize and grant tenure to one of our, our one of our own and who's who's been with us for a while. And, and so we really are excited to do this. And we only wish we could do it just in person. In person. Um, and, with, and with cake. And with, yeah. yes, <laughs> and with cake. Uh, well, we, we can make uh, make it up uh, at some future date by having a little reception, I think. That would I be think, nice. I think that would be very nice. Um, yes. I think that would be very nice. So, uh, but let's, without further ado, because I think they've waited a long time this evening. Item B, the superintendent recommends the Board of Education grant tenure, tenure to Tara E. Arnold, English teacher for the 7 through 12 grades in the tenure area of English, effective September 1st of 2020. So I moved. have a motion. So moved. Moved by Terry. Second. Second. Seconded by Jessica. Discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Carried 7-0. And Ms. Arnold, I will tell you that when we have our celebration, we always ask our tenured people to stand <coughs> and, 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 and to congratulate them in person. And sometimes they say a few words. So while you got off this evening, we'll, we'll be asking to have you comment a little bit about it when we get together again. So um, congratulations. Item C, the superintendent recommends the Board of Education grant tenure to Carrie Ernst, special education K-12, I'm sorry, K-6 teacher in the tenure area of education of children with handicapping conditions, general special education, again, effective September 1 of 2020. May I have a motion? So, so moved. moved. Moved by Kim, seconded by Judy. Discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Carried. Seven zero. Congratulations, Carrie. Wonderful accomplishment. Item D. The superintendent recommends the Board of Education grant tenure to Ashley C. Howe, elementary education K-6 teacher in the tenure area of elementary education, effective September 1 of 2020. May I have a motion? So moved. Moved, moved by Jessica. Second. Second. Seconded by Terry. Discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Carried 7-0. Congratulations, Ms. Howe. And item E, the superintendent recommends the Board of Education grant tenure to Susan Weck, special education 712 te teacher in the tenure area of education of children with handicapping conditions, general special education effective September 1, 2020. May I have a motion? So moved. Moved by Judy. Second. Second. Seconded by Kim. Discussion. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Seven zero. Congratulations, uh, Susan, on your on your accomplishment. I don't know what it's going to sound like, but I'm going to uh, say let's give a round of applause to all of those. <laughs> So, um, you know, uh, Mary Beth, if I can just just chime in for a second. Um, again, I'd like to, to congratulate Tara and Carrie and Ashley and Susan. Um, you know, receiving tenure is a is a is a really important event in any teacher's uh, professional career, and and achieving tenure here in East Aurora is particularly challenging. We have very high expectations for all of our our teachers, and and these four are are really among the very best. Uh, we couldn't be more pleased with what they have brought to the district and so grateful for their fine work. 
and and what we will do is we will normally the the principals would would say something uh, about each of the teachers at this time uh, but under these circumstances it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a little awkward so what we're going to do is we're going to bring them back to a future meeting when we're actually together uh, in, in the uh, multi-purpose room and when we like as Judy said when we can have a nice cake with all four of their faces on it I think that'll be the, <laughs> the most faces on any cake that we've ever had and so uh, we're just really grateful and 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 thankful that you're with us and uh, and, and sort of sorry that it has to happen this way, but it, it certainly doesn't take anything away from your achievement, which is it's just been a really quite spectacular. And so we're really grateful to have you with us. Um, yes. And um, and like I said, we will we'll let you know when we will celebrate at, at a future meeting, hopefully sooner than later. Yeah, and, par and part of the reason why we, we want to have it on the agenda now is we don't want to delay that accomplishment for them. We want them to, to mm -hmm. feel comfortable and know that that's, that's happened and it's done, but by all means, we are... Uh, going to have them all back for a celebration. Yeah. Sure. All right. Item F, <clears throat> the superintendent recommends the Board of Education accept the resignation for the purpose of retirement of Don Jarno, teacher aide, effective June 27, 2020. May I have a motion? So moved. So, moved by Dan. Second by Judy. Judy. Discussion? I taught with Don years ago, and I just, I wish her all the best. Yeah, she's been a wonderful aide. She's been here for many years and has done a great job assisting us at all different levels and with all different um, types of students. Uh, she's really, has been a, a wonderful, wonderful support. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Carried seven zero. Item G, the superintendent recommends the Board of Education approve the 2020-2021 school calendar. We've discussed it earlier this evening, and that's attached to your board documents. May I have a motion? So moved. Moved. Moved by Kim, seconded by Terry. Discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Carried 7-0. Item H, the superintendent recommends the Board of Education approve the change order um, for the greeter station and the egress windows and vent kits at the high school in the amount of $54,700. It's all detailed in the documents attached under the, both those change orders to your board documents. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Moved by Terry, seconded by Dan. Discussion? Do we have any idea when those windows will be completed? Um, it, it started, Dan. I don't know when the completion date will be. So they started it already? Yeah. Good. That's great. Yep. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Period 7-0. Item I, the superintendent recommends the Board of Education hereby adopt a resolution approving the 2020-2021 Erie 2 BOCES tentative administrative budget in the amount of $3,393. I'm sorry. Three million. That wasn't right. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Boy, $3,393,794 as detailed in the attachment. May I have a motion? So moved. Moved by Dan. Second. Second. Seconded by Jessica. Discussion. I think, Mr. Brunson, that's the first time I've heard you move the administrative post <laughs> the time I've said. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm becoming more flexible. As you know. <laughs> I thought I heard favor. reluctance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Seven zero. Item J, the superintendent recommends the Board of Education cast one vote for each of the following individuals in order to fill the four vacancies on the Erie 2 Chautauqua Cataragas BOCES Board of Education. There are four seats for three-year terms to expire June 30th in 2023. There are only four candidates, Thomas DeJoe from Brockton Central School District, David Lowey from the Iroquois Central School District, Christine Schnars from the Jamestown City School District, and Richard Vogan from the Lakeshore Central School District. May I have a motion? So moved. Moved by Jessica. Second. 
Second. Seconded by Kim. <clears throat> Discussion? Well, just a, a word of appreciation to all of the BOCES board members. They, uh, they're kind of in the background. We don't often see them. We don't often talk to them, but they're providing a real service uh, to our district and to all of the districts in Erie to BOCES. So thank you for their, for their efforts. Yeah, and I have to give a particular shout out to Mr. Lowry during this. Um, yes. During during his tenure as 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 uh, president over there, and and just his his efforts in this last several months, he's really. I mean, just the volume of information that he is able to get out to us in a timely manner is is really appreciated. Yeah. Anyway, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Carried seven zero. And item K, the superintendent recommends the Board of Education approve the following change order for the capital outlay project, the middle school reconstruction. Um, and let me just, uh, just so the record is clear, it's approving an addition of alternate one to the current contract of Maple Hill Site, Inc. And that to remove and replace the existing sidewalk and curb from the North Grove main entrance to the Main Street School and in the total amount of $30,375. Um, Mark Architecture recommends that the Maple Hill Site Inc. be awarded the contract for alternate one. They have met all the requirements in our contract conditions and are found capable of completing the additional work required. May I have a motion? So moved. Moved by Terry. Second. Seconded by Judy. Discussion. Well, just a quick question. Um, is, does that mean the entire sidewalk and curb for that street is to be done or just a piece of it? Uh, Dan, this would be the piece from from the corner of Main and North Grove up to the, the, the North Grove entrance. Because right now, from the entrance to the parking lot is being finished, and so now we're able to take the first alternate and finish it from from Main Street all the way to the the entry entrance to the parking lot. Okay, so all all of those dirt uh, holes that run along there will be filled in with concrete except for from from the back of the parking lot the back of the entrance to to um uh what's uh Fillmore yeah okay that's yeah, le less yeah. important it's, it's the ones are, that are a tripping hazard are the yes. ones that are right alongside the school building and it was right. a good idea to try to put grass in there but it was it just couldn't work so I'm glad to hear that's being taken care of, and and then also the the, the similar low uh, blacktop areas that go up to Main Street will yep. be uh, will be done as well along with the curb. I think when yes. we brought the buses there, Dan, that we had um, it was all all grass, and we we did the concrete to to have some drop offs when the buses came, but we really didn't think about that impact it would have when, yeah. when there was the both of them there so well it was one of those unfortunate changes that was made the, the, at the last uh, run of the last bond issue uh that we thought would solve the problem but really didn't right. so the, right. the, hopefully this will be the last bit of sidewalk we have to do along there but the one, one, I'm sorry. Ahead, Terry, I'm sorry. One part that didn't get done, Dan, that we had hoped to get done was from the back of the parking lot all the way to that intersection because that's where the snow mounds are and the kids have to jump over those snow mounds to get into their cars, um, which is why um, Matt put up and Doug put up those do not stop um, and no parking um, flags and poles. Yeah, it's well. It continues to be problematic, but the whole business of of moving cars and buses and children all in that very confined area. So anything we continue to do to study that in the safety committee uh, is uh, is appreciated. And I just want to correct um, just the bid amount. As I was reading it, I didn't catch that. So I had said the bid amount would be thirty thousand three hundred and seventy five dollars. But the contractor did agree to give us a $1,500 discount to be applied to the original bid amount. 
And so the, the alternate bid total is actually $28,875. So with that, may I have a vote? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Carried, seven zero. Well, that brings <clears throat> this meeting to a conclusion. I wanna thank everyone for a successful online meeting again. Our next meeting is scheduled for April 23rd of 2020. That again will be an online meeting since the schools are closed until the end of, uh, till the, when are we closed? Till now, April or 29th. April 20th? 29th. April 29th, right. So um, that will again be an online meeting. Um, and tune in for that and we'll have some updates on the, on the budget discussion. I want to wish you all <clears throat> safety and wellness in the next several weeks and social distance. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. May I have a motion to adjourn? Oh. Moved. Moved by John. Second. 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 Judy. Kitty all cat. those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. <laughs> we are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. And thanks for all those who were uh, watching online. Thank you. Good night. If I'm open, just make sure to either X out or hang up so that we can um, end the recording and, and then Dennis can uh, move it on. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Dennis, thanks for sticking with us. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, good night, everyone. Good night. All right. Um, all right. Okay. I think we're set, Dennis. Oh, you're blocked.